No other tool is more important to an FPS gamer than the trigger. But a mouse is more than the physical representation of our weapon. It is our tool which allows us to navigate a hostile digital world with precision. And it is also the tool, if built correctly, which will make you forget you're even using one. I'm Rafael from Hardware Sugar, and we have been given early access to the wired ROG Keras. When I unboxed the ROG Keras, I'll admit I was underwhelmed. My previous mice have been an old Razer Death Adder, a Corsair Wireless Harpoon, and I most recently upgraded to a Corsair Wireless Iron Claw. When I saw the shape and curvature of the mouse, I was instantly reminded of my old grey trackball mouse from the past. You know, the ones that accumulated dirt underneath but which you got to play with the ball afterwards. Of course, those old mice didn't have programmable RGB at the scroll wheel and logo. I have big hands, and I was very concerned that I was going to suffer through another mouse which would run over my pinky and give me hand aches the next day after long gaming sessions. It was the reason why only after 3 months I had to move on from my harpoon and move on to a larger mouse. Word of advice to everyone, please for the sake of your health, invest in comfort when selecting a keyboard and mouse. One of the unique aspects of the ROG Keras is that ROG provides extra switches for the mouse. Why? Because the Keras is designed so that you can replace the switches yourself. Mice are usually replaced because of double clicking problems due to wear and tear over time, but it is a waste since the other parts of the mouse are usually still working. ROG therefore provides you with an alternative. Instead of wasting money on a new mouse, why not repair your current mouse for free with the extra switches? In short, it's as though you bought the lifespan of two high-quality gaming mice for just 3,380 pesos. This is a big selling point. It is my first time to encounter a mouse which comes packaged with replaceable switches. I don't, however, approve of the instructions manual detailing how to remove the cover. Obviously, you need a specific kind of screwdriver in order to pry this open. It is also worth noting that some reviewers have mentioned that the pre-installed switches are made in China, while the ones pre-packaged are keys made from Japan which are of more sturdy quality. I cannot, however, vouch for this. However, you may want to look into that. Hey! If you like what you're watching so far, please consider liking and subscribing to Hardware Sugar where we generate regular tech content. I have used the carriers for two weeks now, and I am happy to report that comfort was never an issue. The issues lay elsewhere, however, let's focus on ergonomics first. The mouse is perfect for claw and fingertip grip users. So if you are a Razer Death Adder user, you should feel quite at home with this. I am not a pro gamer, but my understanding is that claw and fingertip grips are what is preferred. Most surprisingly, I thought my hand was going to feel cramped because the mouse looks small. But because it curves downwards as opposed to my Corsair Harpoon which is shaped like a cliff, it achieves comfort even for my big hands. Also, I must say that this is my first time encountering this kind of cord before. It feels and looks like black shoelace as opposed to a cable wire, thus leading to a relaxed design. It also isn't as hard and inflexible as most cables are, thus you don't need to worry about cable snagging or Worse, the weight of the cable pulling the mouse in the opposite direction while you were gaming. That to me is the worst feeling when you actually need to fight your own mouse while you are fighting. The overall chassis of the carriers is covered in black matted high quality plastic. Now it is important to point out that most gaming mice provide a rubber pad or a textured grip for your thumb and little finger for added comfort and to prevent sweaty hands from slipping. So you might be thinking, yo what's up ROG? Why didn't you place extra padding on your mouse? Everyone else does it. Isn't extra padding always better? Well, the truth is, actually the best things are the ones which have less things. I switched from my Razer Death Adder because the rubber pad peeled off and I had to use super glue to put it back, but it was never really the same afterwards. And I had to constantly reapply glue every other month. And the fact that I had to glue something back on to begin with just makes it sound so cheap. So I really don't have a problem if ROG chose not to place things which deteriorate in the medium or long term. Besides, I have clocked in more hours with this mouse cutting videos than shooting in COD and man I say cutting videos can be more strenuous than playing FPS. At no point did I feel discomfort in the many hours that I have used to carry. 
Also, a textured grip like the one on my Iron Claw is also prone to dirt. Thus, if you're the type of person who likes his gear to be neat and clean all the time, then the RG Carries offers no apparent cosmetic dirt problems. The Carries is one of the lightest mice I've ever used in my life. It being just 62 grams, but with a DPI of 16,000, is really a refreshing experience in Call of Duty. This is a pro gamer mouse built for precision because of the high DPI, thus the premium price tag of 3380 However, I repeat that the complementary switches add an additional life to the mouse, thus you should expect it to last twice as long. The Razer Viper, for instance, has a 20,000 DPI, but a price tag of around 5,500 to 6,000 pesos, and it doesn't allow switch replacements at all. It is not only DPI, but weight which contributes to the smoothness of use. For purposes of comparison, my Iron Claw has a DPI of 18,000, but a weight of 105 grams, or almost twice the weight of the Keris. And believe me, the Iron Claw is indeed as heavy as it looks. It may look like the Batmobile, but it sure doesn't travel as fast. The low weight and high DPI of the Keris is very noticeable. Panic from left to right in-game feels less of a chore. In fact, I didn't even know moving a mouse around was a chore until I switched back to the heavier Iron Claw. I truly felt as though my hand was gliding across my mouse pad with very little effort, and it was gliding around with a purpose and not an uncontrolled erratic mess. My biggest problem with the gaming aspect of the mouse is that you can only change the mouse sensitivity through a button found at the bottom of the mouse, which is really sort of useless for snipers who don't have time to stop moving in order to press the button once or several times. Another thing is that there is also just one button, unlike the Asus M3 mouse which has two. So if you by accident overpress by one, you need to keep pressing it until you get to the DPI you want. I honestly think that this is a missed opportunity. Then again, the reason as to why it probably looks so minimal and why it reminded me of old mice to begin with is precisely because old mice didn't have extra buttons other than the main left and right. Being able to change your DPI on the fly is helpful not only in FPS gaming, but productivity as well. This is definitely something to keep in mind before buying. One very important RGB characteristic is that the RGB on the scroll wheel illuminates the whole wheel. My Corsair Iron Claw and the Razer Black Adders, for instance, only illuminate the sides of the wheel, but not the wheel itself. RGB is controlled by Asus Aura Sync, and I talked about it in detail in my M3 mouse review, which I'll link at the bottom. It is there that I briefed on how the Armory Crate program is a better choice for gamers who don't want to overly customize their RGB. You just select preset stuff and you are good to go. However, if you want to do color customizations, use the Aura Creator program in order to mix and match colors and assign various kinds of rhythms, like breathing, rainbow theme, and the like. The RGB scroll wheel and the RG logo can be programmed separately. And like all Asus Aura Sync devices, if you have other hardware which works alongside them, then you can pair them up with your mouse as well. This is a well-priced mouse for 3,380 pesos. And because it comes included with the option of a second life through the replaceable switches, it feels as though you are actually getting a mouse which will last twice as long. In fact, I bet you could probably buy the additional switches from somewhere else after you've used up the ones that came with the mouse. However, bear in mind that you will still need to live with the fact that you won't have access to a button which allows you to change sensitivity on the fly. The unique shoelace string kind of cord, the minimal stealthy look coupled with just enough RGB to set it apart from the competition may however make up for this, especially if you aren't a sensitive person. Stay tuned for our upcoming reviews on the S21 Ultra and our first ever investment session. And I want to give a special shout out to our top fans, ITX Addict, Deepry Shun, John Ochea, Christian Espinosa, Mark Palania, and Asher Anima. Thanks guys, we really appreciate it.